Hey, 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 Jake Cake here. I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we were away for one week, but we are back and we're going to be talking about week 13 and week 14. In this episode, we will cover each team individually. We will talk about week 13 first and then week 14 how sequential numbers are. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to talk about the Kent Murphy Dingers first. Week 13 was a win for me. Seven categories to three categories. Now, had some major contributions. Pretty much everyone did contribute, but the main guys included Royce Lewis with three home runs, but he also only had three RBIs. We have to get people on base with those home runs. We need some more grand slams. Remember when you were hitting all those last year? Yeah, I need you to do that for me. Lane Thomas had himself a week. Six runs, one home run, eight RBIs, and one stolen base, just for good measure. I also had a win and six plus strikeouts from Jake Flaherty and Tobias Myers. Trevor Meagle and Mason Miller both got me at least two saves. And like I talked about before, just major overall contributions from the entire team, especially Carlos Santana, who was a midweek pickup. Now for the guys who did nothing for me, Adolis Garcia, you've been cold for a while, man, but you hit 154 this past week and didn't really contribute anything other than a run and an RBI. Matt Olson, you did get me a home run, so thank you. However, your .087 batting average, not doing it for me, buddy. And then Jake Irvin, you have had, out of your last seven starts, six quality starts. The one start I had you for, you did not get a quality start. Now let's move to the as and drops for week 13. I added Andrew Abbott, Chad Green, and Carlos Santana. We dropped Yimmy Garcia, Chris Paddock, and Carlos Santana. Now we're going to move to week 14 for the Dingers. We lost two categories to seven categories. Pretty much the only reason we lost was because Aaron Judge carried the other guy's team. So as much as I love him doing well for my Yankees, I hate having to go against him in fantasy. Now let's talk about the guys on my team that did well. Alec Bohm had two home runs, seven RBIs, and a stolen base for good measure. Speaking of stolen bases, CJ Abrams and Jose Altuve had a home run and three stolen bases each. And they had huge wins from Jake Irvin and Andrew Abbott. They also got at least six strikeouts each. And finally, Craig Kimbrell had three saves for me during the week. Now let's talk about the guys that didn't do well. Terrible start from Miles Mikolas, Jack Flaherty, Jake Irvin, and Schwellenberger, Barker, whatever guy names for the Braves. Then I had one RBI from Riley Green throughout the week. And then Alec Burleson has just fallen off the face of the earth, unfortunately. So we might have to cut bait with him. Now let's move to the ads and drops. Where now that I think about it, there were a lot of Cardinals added to my team, including Alec Burleson, Miles Miklas, and Wilson Contreras. We also added Brandon Paff twice and Schwellenbach, Berger, Barker, Pointer for the Braves. The drops included a lot of pitchers, including Brandon Paff, Andrew Abbott, Miles Miklas, Schwellen Barker Berker for the Braves, Jesus Lizardo, and then non-pitcher Tyler Schauderstrom. Now we're going to move to the Cheese Weasels, where in week 13 I had 128.5 points and was in second place. Now, because of all the accomplishments on this next stat line, we need to read these. Leading us off, Tyler O'Neill. He had three home runs, but also only three RBIs. We definitely need some people on base, man. Delaney Thomas had 11 runs scored, eight RBIs, and, you know, just a solo base for good measure. Bryce Turing had 11 hits, 2 home runs, and 8 RBIs. No stolen bases for Mr. Turing. Ryan McMahon had 11 hits. He did have 2 home runs and was a 4-4 batting average. That is great. Also, Paul Skeens had 1 win out of his 2 starts and 15 strikeouts, while Tyler Glasnow also had a win and 10 strikeouts in his start. Now let's move to the guys that did not do well for me. <sighs> Unfortunately, Michael Garcia has been very cold at the plate these past few weeks. This past week, 13, he went 2 for 19 with 1 RBI and 1 walk. That's not going to cut it. Now, recently, he did add second base eligibility, which is huge, but we also need you to make sure you're hitting the ball and not just fielding well. We also had bonus saves from Craig Kimbrell and Kyle Finnegan. That's unfortunate because that lost me points moving forward. Now, the only action we had for the ads and drops was the loss or departure or cutting of Shea Langoliers. It was a procedural move. We had to activate Trey Turner off of the IL, and he's doing pretty well for me. So that means we went catcherless this week. So we're going to be moving into week 14, where we're in third place with 120.5 points. That's very unfortunate. 
And the guys who did well for me in this league did include Bryce Turing, who had seven runs scored, one home run, five RBIs. Four of those five came off of a grand slam this past week. And he also had one stolen base. Christian Yelich had eight hits, one home run, and another three stolen bases for me. Trey Turner had nine hits, while Aaron Nola in his two starts had one win and 15 strikeouts, while Paul Skeens went against a tough Braves lineup and had nine strikeouts. As far as the people who did poorly for me, it did not do as well for me, Michael Garcia is on this list again. Marcelo Zuna, you're on this list now. Ryan McMahon, you're on this list. And unfortunately, we also have to talk about how Tyler Glass now blew up in his most recent start, got me a loss, lost me some points. I need you to step up. I'll give you one or two bad starts throughout the year, but man, I, I'm pretty sure this is your second bad start of the year, so we cannot be having any more of those. And now we're going to move to the Funky Junkie Joker Monkeys. Week 13 was a huge matchup between myself and the only undefeated guy in the league. Well, going into Saturday, I was down by 130 points. It was not looking good. However, my opponent had used all of his 13 stars throughout the week already. So I knew I had at least six or seven starts left before I was done in that category. And I tell you one thing, we made up for it. We came out with a win, 467 to 404, handing Mr. Funky Cheese his first loss of the season. Now, this is the same person that I've met in the championship game a time or two. He's knocked me out of the playoffs a time or two. So we definitely go back in this league to be some of formidable foes for each other. Now let's get to the people who did well for me. We had huge weeks from Yanier Diaz and Mr. Lane Thomas, who had 31 points. Nick Pavetta had 32 points, while Bailey Ober got me 36. But Pablo Lopez, with his 14 strikeout performance against the Oakland Athletics, got me 49 points. Woo! That was great. Now for the people that didn't do well for me, Nolan Arenado only got me 6 points, or Cole Irvin only got me 4 points, and unfortunately, Salvi... Salvador Perez and Brian Wu both only got me one point. I burned a start on Brian Wu out of my 13, and he got me one point. That's not going to cut it, man. I need you to do better. Come to find out, he ended up going on the IL this past week for week 14, and he also did poor for me this week. But before we get to that, let's talk about the ads and drops. We did add stolen base king David Hamilton, Joey Ortiz, Carlos Santana, and Landon Knack. We dropped Jose Suarez because he got hurt when on the 15-day IL, but we are going to look to add him because he does have a nice matchup with the Oakland Athletics this week. Abraham Toro, again, went on the IL. He's not going to be back before the All-Star break. Isaiah kiner Falefa and Luke Weaver. Luke Weaver was not doing as much as I wanted him to with the Yankees in their relief role. They also did have a few other guys, but they have gotten hurt since then, so Luke Weaver will likely step back into that high leverage bulk relief role as he was with the Yankees. Now we're going to move to week 14 with the Funky Junky Joker Monkeys. And as I switch pages, it burns my soul to say that I did lose 492 to 464. Now one of my starters that I decided not to play was Luis Ortiz. He pitched a pretty good game. He got me 27 points or would have got me 27.5 points. Now if you do the math, I lost by 27 and some odd points. That's I don't put the decimals there. You can look at the score, though. Um, had I started him instead of, uh, I don't know, Cole Irvin, who did not do well for me, I would have won this matchup. Now, I think that probably hurts the most. You know, I'll lose by 100, and if there's nothing I could do, okay, so be it. But when I lose by 27 points and some change, and I absolutely could have done something, that burns my soul and that hurts my heart because I made a bad decision. So, I'm going to say it again. Pitching let me down. But let's go ahead and get to the people who did well for me. Freddie Peralta got me 42 points. Luis Rengifo got me 40 points. And Christopher Sanchez, finally pitching well, complete game shutout, got me 35 points. People who didn't do well for me. Cole Irvin got me three points. Cutter Crawford got me three points, but also had his game shortened. So I don't know how that's going to impact me. If he does, in fact, start when that game is replayed or resumed, do I get those points? If he scores 27 plus points for me and I win, oh, that would be crazy. In any case, Nick Pavetta only got me six points. And JJ Bleday only got me one point. It's very unfortunate. 
The ads and drops for this week did include a few odd names. Carlos Estevez was an ad because he's been doing very well for the Angels, not giving up many runs, if any, these last few starts. Byron Buxton was also an ad, and he did well up to being on my team, and then he's done nothing. We also added Kyle Freeland as a last ditch effort to try to win on Sunday. He did decently, not horrible, but he only got me 12 points. And then finally, Spencer Howard, he lost me points. Now you might be thinking, who is Spencer Howard and why is he on your team? Well, he was supposed to be bulk reliever for the Giants against the Dodgers. That was a bad decision. We had to drop Jose Soriano because he went on the IL. But again, we talked about he's coming back here soon. We also dropped Bowden Francis, Spencer Howard, and Joey Ortiz. One more thing to add about this week in uh, the Funky Junkie Joker Monkeys League. I scored 464 points. One other person besides the person who beat me scored more than me. So, of course, I got unlucky this week. Now we're going to move to the ESPN platforms and talk about the Peach Creek Purgatory team, where week 13 brought about a loss, 9-11 to 8-57. Pretty much my pitching let me down, but I did have some quality guys do very well for me. Fromber Valdez got me 57, Max Free got me 52, and Riley Green got me 48. Now for the guys that didn't do well for me, they were pitchers. Luis Ortiz got me negative two. He was a bulk reliever. Javier Sai got me negative five. And then John Schreiber played for the Red Sox last year. And it must be because I don't like him because he's a Red Sox player. He got me negative seven. Thanks a lot. Now let's talk about the ads and drops. We added relief pitchers, Andrew Kittridge and Hunter Gaddis, while also looking at Chase Anderson as a bulk reliever. That ended up not happening. Hogan Harris as a starter and Mitch Garver, who I had previously traded for in the offseason. Now let's move to the drops. We dropped Bowden Francis, Luis Ortiz, and John Schreiber. We also ended up dropping Carson Kelly, who was a catcher for the Tigers who had a doubleheader, and then finally ended up dropping Jose Suarez because he won the IL, but he's coming back here soon. And as we go from a loss to a win in Week 14, the Peach Creek Purgatory team was able to come out with a big victory, 824 to 772, much closer than it needed to be. And also my opponent only started nine of his 12 pitchers, so he absolutely positively should have beat me. Some of the guys that did well for me included Cattell Marte with 71 points, Freddie Peralta with 67 points, and George Springer Dinger with 61 points. Now for the guys that did not do well for me, Marcus Stroman, you did give me eight points, but you acted like a diva out on the mound. A double play was not turned, and so you want to throw a fit into your glove and get mad about that? There's no room in the Bronx for that, buddy. We also only had four points from Nick Pavetta and Fromber Valdez, which is crap. Cole Irvin got me negative 11 points, and Spencer Howard got me negative 12. Again, you might be wondering, who in the world is Spencer Howard? Why is he on the team? Bulk reliever for the Giants against the Dodgers. Bad decision. Now let's move to the as and drops. The ads include Bowden Francis, bulk reliever, Luis Ortiz, bulk reliever, but it actually did get a start. Ryan Nelson, who was blown up for negative four points. I forgot to add him. We also were able to add Mauricio Dubon because of his multi-positional eligibility. Spencer Howard and Ryan Stanek, who probably lost me points in the first game he was with me. The drops didn't include Chase Anderson because I thought he was going to get a bulk relief role. Also, Hogan Harris, Kevin Pillar, for some odd reason, Ryan Nelson was also dropped. Uh, Bowden Francis and Spencer Howard. I wonder why Spencer Howard and Ryan Nelson, because they were terrible for me. Now we're going to move to the South Harmon Institute of Technology. Week 13 was huge for us as we were able to come out with a win. 14 categories to 2 categories to 2 categories. Again, with all of the stats that we have, we have to read these off. First of all, Alec Burleson, 10 runs, 3 home runs, 18 total bases, 8 RBIs, and 3 stolen bases. Woo, that was a mouthful alone. Brandon Nimmo, nine runs, four home runs, 22 total bases, and eight RBIs. Lane Thomas had six runs, one home run, 14 total bases, eight RBIs, and one stolen base. Tyler O'Neill, three home runs, 18 total bases, three RBIs. Dude, we got to get some people on base. But he did also have four walks, so that was great. Bryce Terang, two home runs, eight RBIs, and 20 total bases. Bailey Ober, a complete game with the win and 10 strikeouts, while Tyler Glass now got 10 strikeouts and a win as well. Now for the guys that did not do well for me. Matt Olson and Michael Garcia have been super cold at the plate. Nick Pavetta had a terrible start. Kittrich blew a save, and Kirby Yates. Man, you really haven't been doing a whole lot. You're still there because you're on the World Series defending Texas Rangers team. As included, Bobby Miller. Chad Green and Andrew Kittridge, while the drops included Caleb Ferguson, Yimmy Garcia, and Brent Rooker. I kind of regret 
dropping Brent Rooker, but he's so inconsistent. That's probably why we dropped him. But anyway, now we're going to move to week 14, where the South Harmon Institute of Technology was in a tie. Seven categories, seven categories to four categories. This tie came against the defending champion who I tied with last year in the championship. We've met in the championships a few times in this league while I've been in it, and it's usually close, but he'll edge it out by a category or two, or like last year, he got the cheap, cheap win when we tied, and Ty went to the higher place. So people that do well for me, Rengifo, 19 total bases, two home runs, and eight runs scored. Also, Freddie Freeman and Brandon Nimmo and Francisco Lindor all had at least 12 total bases. Freddie Freeman and Brandon Nimmo both had at least one home run and six RBIs. Brandon Nimmo had two home runs and seven RBIs. And now we get to the pitching. Seth Lugo in his two starts had 18 strikeouts. I don't think he got a win, though, which is very unfortunate. But who did get a win was Bailey Ober with his 10 strikeouts as well. So that was great. Now for the guys that didn't do well for me. First, we'll start with the pitching. Terrible starts from Cole Irvin, Ryan Nelson, Cal Quantrill. Don't ask why I had him on my team. I needed a win. I thought he had an easy win, but obviously it didn't happen. Bobby Miller and Tyler Glasnow. Now for the guys that have been cold at the plate, Matt Olson, Alec Burleson, Tyler O'Neill, and Michael Garcia. My goodness, fellas. Can y'all please, please just do something at the plate for me? Now let's move to the ads and drops. We added Carlos Estevez, Taj Bradley, Ryan Nelson, Brandon Marsh, Carlos Santana, and Cal Quantrill. We dropped Ryan Pepeo, Chad Green, Taj Bradley, Ryan Nelson, Brandon Marsh, and Andrew Kittridge. So, unfortunately, those ads did not work out for me. You heard a few of them. Brandon Marsh was picked up and immediately dropped because he wasn't playing that day. Ryan Nelson was supposed to have a good matchup for me, got blown up, was released. And Chad Green has been the incumbent closer for two weeks and has not had a save opportunity, so we had to cut bait with him. The last thing we're going to talk about, Russell my Jim Jams. Week 13 ended up in a tie, seven categories to seven categories to two categories. Because of the stats, we're going to read these off again. Brandon Nimmo, nine runs, four home runs, five extra base hits, eight RBIs, and three walks. Lane Thomas, six runs. Four extra base hits, eight RBIs, one stolen base. Yandy Diaz, two home runs, six RBIs, four extra base hits. Tyler O'Neill, three home runs, four extra base hits, three RBIs, and four walks. All Jameson Tyon had 10 strikeouts and a win. And now for the guys who did not do well for us. Overall, we had seven hitters that were hitting 200 or below for us. We had three starting pitchers who gave up at least six earned runs in their short starts, and three relief pitchers who gave up at least two earned runs in their very short appearances. Now to the ads and drops, where the ads did include Miles Mikolas, Kyle Gibson, Alec Marsh, Jamison Tyon, David Hamilton, Mark Hanna, and then unfortunately, Paul DeYoung, who we did not start, but did well for us. But when we did start him, he did not do anything for us. Go figure. And the drops include Josh Bell, Mitchell Parker, Josh Smith, Kyle Gibson, because he was supposed to start and did not. Connor Falafel, 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 that guy. Alec Marsh and Chris Paddock. So moving from week 13 to week 14, a much better result. As the Russell My Jim Jams team was able to come out with a win, 10 categories to six. Some big numbers from Taylor Ward, seven runs, two home runs, five RBIs, and five extra base hits. Brandon Nemo, seven runs, two home runs, four extra base hits, six walks, and seven RBIs. Logan O'Hoppy, two home runs and six RBIs. Ringifo, two home runs and four RBIs. Kimbrell with three saves, Romero with three holds, and then finally Kevin Gosman, 12 strikeouts and a win in his start, and Mr. Chris Bassett, 10 strikeouts and a win in his two starts. Now for the people that did not do well for me, David Hamilton and Tyler O'Neill, very cold to the plate. Kevin Gosman, terrible start, along with Michael Mikolas. So both those guys, bad starts. Gosman redeemed himself with at least one good start. The ads and drops this week do include Josh Smith, Taylor Ward. I'm so glad I was able to pick up Taylor Ward. Obviously doing big things for me this week. Kate Smith and Spencer Howard. And the drops included Yoshida, Mark Canna, and Miles Mikolas. So that does it for the recaps of week 13 and 14. Unfortunately, some of the additions from two weeks ago are not relevant anymore. So let's talk about some of the few guys that are worth the ad this week. You heard me say his name once in addition, Cade Smith. This man is racking up the holes for the Indians or the Guardians, whatever one you want to call them. Between Smith and Gaddis, those are two guys, which I guess you can add Gaddis to this list. Those are two guys, if you're in holds leagues, 
you want to look at because they are doing very well. They're picking up, I think they both have at least 15 holds. So again, Holdsley, look at them. Another guy to look up, Landon Knack. A few of his last starts, he has not gone long enough to get the win, but if you're looking at ratios, he's not going to hurt them. If you're looking for points, he's probably not getting in for you. I don't know if y'all are familiar with him, but he plays for the Pirates, Luis Ortiz. He was in the rotation to start the year, didn't do well, went to a bulk reliever position and has done phenomenal. Pitched a very good game this past week. Would have won me a league had I started him, but it is what it is, whatever. But he could potentially be a nice addition for you. We've talked about Bowden Francis being a bulk reliever, getting those cheap wins and some easy points without blowing saves or, you know, blowing games or, you know, blowing up your area whip. I want to thank you for joining me. It's been a tongue twister, long, crazy day last two weeks uh, also. So thank you for your patience and waiting for this video. I look forward to talking to you next week. This is Jake Cake. I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me.